So the real question and answer we're looking for is, what did Jesus accomplish on the cross? What did he actually accomplish? And here are your two options. Well, you can have three. Let's start with the universalist position is that on the cross, Jesus accomplished the salvation of every person that will ever live. That's option one. Every single person that will ever live will be saved and in heaven. Is that true? Scripture's clear. No, that's not true. Your second option is on the cross, Jesus made men savable. He removed some obstacles so that some of their own will could be saved. And your third option is Jesus, limited scope, no specific number in mind for us. We don't know, but he died in the place of his people and he will bring them to faith. He will save them. He accomplished their salvation. Universalism, no. Second option, made men savable. Third option, he actually died to save his people. He accomplished it. So with those in mind, look at Isaiah chapter 53, starting with verse 7. What did Jesus accomplish on the cross? Isaiah's writing, roughly 700 years before the Lord Jesus even came to the earth. But if you didn't know that, if you, didn't, if you weren't very familiar with the Bible, but you knew something about Jesus, you'd probably think this passage is just an eyewitness of some sort describing what Jesus went through on the cross. That's phenomenal to think that this is how God worked through Isaiah to write it 700 years before he even came, but to even write it in the sense of this is what's going to happen. It's as if God gave Isaiah this vision of this is what Jesus experienced or will experience for Isaiah on the cross. Verse 7, he, he's talking about Jesus, the suffering servant that will come to Christ, the Messiah. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? Up to this point, as far as what he accomplished, it doesn't really get anywhere until the end of verse 8 when he says, stricken for the transgression of my people? That seems a particular view of people in mind. It seems, and honestly, it sounds a lot like Matthew one twenty one. When the angel comes to Joseph and tells Joseph what he's going to name the baby inside Mary's womb and says, you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. It sounds a lot like that. It echoes that. Stricken for the transgression of my people. Is that definitive? No, not necessarily. Stricken for the transgression of my people, she will bear a son, you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Look at verse 9. And they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man 